Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Casual Conversations. My name is Brenda Bose, and we are back with Dr. Marissa Beck. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm happy. I'm good. I'm You're happy good. to be with you. Obviously, I can't <laughs> even get the words out. Um, so I want to talk to you. This this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We're in the month of October, mm-hmm. um, and so many women specifically are affected by breast cancer. Um, obviously, we don't have specific statistics right now, but I wanted to talk to you because you have made a name for yourself, Dr. Beck, because you have been around the world um, letting people know that women are surgeons and women are in surgery, and it's important to recognize and acknowledge um, for uh, the next generation that they young girls can be whatever they want to be. Um, and so you've been in the Washington Post, you've been in BuzzFeed, you've been in so, you know, you, the people, and because it's just super important. I'm talking about specifically the New York Magazine um, cover. Mm-hmm. Um, and so can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah. And the importance of women in surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, can we just, I don't how know. How did that all that, start? Yeah, how did it all yeah. start? Like, where, where did it come from? So, I mean, people have really been, there have been women in surgery for, you know, decades now. Absolutely. But I think where this movement started on social media, the I look like a surgeon hashtag, started in August 2015. There is a surgery resident, Heather Logie, who at that time was at University of North Carolina. She and her friend were chatting about having seen the I look like an engineer movement that took off from somebody in Silicon Valley, a tech uh, person there who um, had been told she didn't look you know, like an engineer. And she was like, what does that mean? And so when they saw that, uh, they thought, is I look like a surgeon next? Because everybody can probably think of times where they've been mistaken for something they're not just because of their gender or their ethnicity, uh, just because people have these biases or stereotypes that put them into this category and that they couldn't possibly be their physician, for example. And after that, it just it's kind of history, right? It, it People in England picked it up and then it kind of spread around the world. and. With uh, Heather, myself, and um, Kathy Hughes, who's a surgeon in Massachusetts, we kind of linked together virtually and decided to try to keep this hashtag going by fostering people to post things, photos, and and, um, whatever else that inspired them to show that they, you know, what does it mean to look like a surgeon? Anybody can look like a surgeon as long as they have the proper training and education. And so even though it started out, based on women in surgery, it actually expanded to so much more where we had people contributing blogs that were of different ethnicities with disabilities, um, uh, gay, um, transgender, and um, bisexual, and also people who maybe, if you looked at them, would say, hey, you're, you know, what people sometimes think of a surgeon, you're, you know, a white guy, like, you look (laughs) like a surgeon. actually felt like they were limited by that stereotype themselves, you know, who somebody who is a single parent to a daughter that people normally don't ascribe, you know, to a surgeon. And so it it just, the things that have come from that have been awe-inspiring. The people I've met and connected with, and then with the New Yorker OR cover challenge that happened with Susie Pitt out of University of Wisconsin, she basically saw that cover replicated it like at a conference and then challenged a few of us to post and so I saw it and was like okay I'll get on it grabbed a couple residents from here we went down to an empty OR and just put a phone down and and took the picture and that's kind of where that all took off uh, just from different networks we already had from the I look like a surgeon and we've heard feedback from people of all levels from you know young girls teenagers um college students, med students, or even just surgeons in places where there aren't any other females with them. And so they're just all on their own about how inspiring it has been to see this and that um, it's really generated this community that's trying to break down gender and other types of stereotypes and biases. And I said New York Magazine. It's actually the New Yorker. Mm -hmm. Um, But you're breaking down barriers. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting because, like, when we think about media, right, and we think about the the positionality that media plays in today's world, it's so amazing that you can literally just post a picture, right, a strategic Mm -hmm. picture in the middle of an OR, an empty OR, and it just goes viral. And it can change the conversation. And it did change the conversation. Right. So since that, there have been actually, it's made an appearance at multiple surgical society events, presidential addresses, both male and female, that are trying to take it a step further. Now that we've, you know, put the photos out there, shown that the the field wants to change and wants to get, um, you know, gender equity and 
um, you know, pay equity, for example, is one way of doing that, would be to then how can we get there? And so figuring out strategies from the top down and the bottom up in organizations about how you achieve that. Because it's fine and well to have this going on on social media, which has been wonderful, but to actually make concrete changes, we have to translate it off the web and actually make some real um, differences to then be able to say, you know, the old adage of like equal work, equal pay. Type absolutely, thing, you know? absolutely, no, absolutely. And it's it's so interesting because like, I mean, I, it's not a secret. I'm a huge fan of Grey's Anatomy. Okay. And so I always say, I said, if the doctor is not like Ellen, Pem Ellen Pompeo's character Meredith, then yeah. I don't want <laughs> <laughs> I need somebody like her. Um, and so, like, so let me ask you this. Who has been an inspiring woman in your life who has really kind of paved the way, whether it be a doctor, whether it be a parent, whether it be a teacher, who has inspired you to just be you and not have to worry about or not think about, like, the barriers that might be in front of you to kind of push forward? I mean, I think it's been a variety of people, but it definitely started with my mom. Um, yes, who, mom. Yeah, right? Yes, know, mom. <laughs> who, uh, a single parent to three of us um, mm -hmm. since we were young. And so she basically just told us to chase after whatever interested us. She never tried to hold us back, and she always supported us fully and continues to be, you know, my biggest fan. And then, and also my sister. And then after... After that, I would say different mentors along the way, both male and female, that have just said, you know, go for it. And um, it doesn't, a lot of people talk about it is important to potentially have people that you can relate to. And sometimes that would be of your same gender, other gender, same ethnicity, different ethnicity. But it is important to have a choice and Absolutely. to be able to visualize yourself in a position. Sometimes you have to see it to believe it. Absolutely. and. You know, you mentioned Grey's Anatomy. I just came across something recently, a physician who was at University of Washington, but then now is in Baltimore, um, I believe Hope Jackson was her name, and there was just a blog post that she was interviewed for about her role on actually serving as an advisor on Grey's Anatomy as like a medical person who could tell them if things were accurate or not, right, come up with right. storylines. She said that she's um, a black woman, and she said that, you know, had never met black physicians or anything, and her potential first exposure, one of the ones that made a lasting impact was Miranda Bailey on Grey's wow. Anatomy and wow. how she saw that this person is a physician, like I can do that too. And so that kind of really gave a concrete recent example for me, but I've heard many like that, that um, and they've done different studies of where if you ask um, children, for example, to draw different pictures of people in certain professions, they'll immediately draw men. And then you'll, I saw this wonderful uh, piece where they then brought in women all in those fields and like construction worker or you know firemen or firewoman and uh, it would just it changed their mindset so much and so it's really something that starts early where we get these biases and that it's something that we really have to work against that as long as you have a passion for it and you have the training for it you know you should really be able to do whatever you want. I'm so inspired right now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I could do anything. <laughs> you can. <laughs> Thank you so much. And shout out to your mom. Shout out to your mom. Because <laughs> yeah, obviously really she raised a phenomenal person <laughs> who is obviously doing amazing work. So, Dr. Beck, thank you again.